Hello guys and welcome to another David Simulata. In today's video, we're working on this 2005 through 2010 Chrysler 300 Limited. This particular vehicle, it is a 2005. So what I'm actually getting ready to do is install some aftermarket fog lights that's got halos uh, in, the, in the bumper. And I gotta do some wiring for that. And I gotta change out the wiring harness that's underneath. Well, right now it's missing one. So we're gonna put a new one in there. And um, we're also gonna be upgrading the grill for the front. And then of course, installing the bumper back. And I'll be replacing two fender liners, one on left and one on the right side. I bought brand new ones, they're inside of the box. I already removed those. I gotta do that. And of course, before I do the fender liners, for another video, I got to actually finish doing uh, the front uh, control arm and uh, uh, my sway bar link on this side. I got to change uh, the bearings. I'm probably going to resurface the rotors, uh, stuff like that. And then I also need to replace serpentine belt. I don't need to, but I'm going to. And I got to replace uh, the tensioner and also one of the pulleys. I just want to make sure I got new stuff installed because I don't want to be thinking what if a serpentine breaks or what if a pulley fails. This car has approximately 125,000 miles. I can't remember for sure. I put 25,000 miles on it this year because I drive a lot uh, for Lyft. And this is my breadwinner. I guess you could call it that. It gets lots of miles. It's my workhorse. I want to make sure it's comfortable to drive. It's comfortable for my passengers. It's always clean and it's looking nice. Um, and I want to be able to enjoy driving it too because I do enjoy it. And it's very important to sometimes take care of the stuff that that can be wrong with the vehicle. Um, well, that can go wrong, like belts, pulleys, uh, tensioners that you know they fail and stuff like that and of course if you got to replace struts and shocks you got to replace struts and shocks you know if you got to do ball joints you got to do that i got to do a, a ball joints uh on this one uh as well um uh, tie rods i don't think i need to do i will do inspection to figure out like if i need to or not Maybe I will, maybe I won't, like one of those situations, but I really want to get this thing done today. I really don't want to stretch anything out. I just want to get it done. But anyways, guys, enjoy the video. So guys, as you can see, I have removed, um, removed the bumper. And this grill normally is supposed to be snapped in, but um, these hold pretty tight, at least for the original grill wasn't so lucky with my Bentley grill. So I recommend if you put a Bentley grill, put the screws in there. So I actually did not put screws in there because I still was working on it. So anyways, let's remove the grill. As you can see, the grill has been removed. Now, at this point, I actually need to install fog lights and they're aftermarket. So I gotta install them and wire them in. Here are the fog lights. As you could tell, there is some original plugs and also there's some pigtails. So maybe this will be a plug and play. Maybe it won't. We'll find out. Turns out this is for 300 limited. I did order the 300 C bumper style and yes, they're different. Um, I'll have to get my other ones. And here's my Chrysler 300 C style lights. As you can tell, they're round and uh, they don't have any tabs. So let's install them and see what they look like. Hey guys, I finished installing the fog lights. This is what I used for the installation. Yep, hardware, hardware department. 
type of screws. But let me show you why I did now, that. Now, first of all, this Chrysler 300 Limited did not come with this style lights. They did not have these rounded things. I wanted Chrysler 300 C look. Therefore, also needed to buy Chrysler 300 C bumper. Now, most likely this bumper is an aftermarket, okay? Obviously, fog lights are aftermarket. So they're not going to make things quite fit. Now, you might have seen me fiddle around with them, but it's a time lapse, it might be kind of hard. I tried installing this on the right side, tried installing the left. Um, it would have made sense to install this light on that side, which made sense. But it fits better this way. It can go further in. Um, so, and also the holes actually align better. Um, if you install it the other way, the holes would not align. But technically, where the holes are, they're like one, two, three. So if I installed, well, basically it doesn't matter. Only one of them would uh, align uh, correctly. Uh, also, these say top. So you gotta put them on the top. These lights are adjustable. You could point them down, you could point them up. So right now I'm kinda do them straight. But you could kind of, I guess, reach in there under the bumper and you could uh, adjust them. Um, you might see the original thread right there. You might think I misaligned, but no, this is a thinner screw. So I actually specifically drilled here. Now, these type of screws, I actually got them at uh, Home Depot. I actually bought three of them. I was going to use all three of them for the installation. Thought they're going to line up, but no, they were not lined up. And I could have drilled, which still would have been not that good of a drill. I would have to put a washer. But I decided not to do that. And here's why. The round circles everywhere for the holes, none of them have threads. This was the best fit type of a, a screw designed type of bolt that I could find. Uh, that would potentially sort of like self tap uh, its way in there. And for the most part, it worked. However, I want to make sure this is secured. So I installed this with that because they're thicker. It made sense. And then these are thinner. So what I did is actually installed them right. I self tapped them right through the plastic and to the light. And additionally, I installed the top one here. I don't want no chance of these things falling out. I already had a problem with the grill falling out. Maybe. I don't know. But it went missing because I didn't have any bolts. It was... It was actually latched in into these uh, things here. And yeah, kind of sucks to lose 80 to $90 grill, um, which is actually eBay pricing uh, for a Bentley style grill. However, I did get another Bentley style grill. More on that later. Uh, what I do need to do is also uh, install an aftermarket uh, wiring harness uh, that I got because the one I had on this one, uh, it was no good. Also, I have these aftermarket lights. I do have the whole installation, how I actually did this. Um, this is actually a pretty professional job, uh, what I did on these lights, the way I wired them up. I'll show you what system that I this use here. So once you put the wires in there and then just uh, heat it, it will heat shrink itself and solder itself. So I don't have any issues actually. However, the these LEDs here, they end up falling down on both sides so I gotta pull the light out on both sides and install it and I may need to find uh, a better solution to where it's a tighter fit for some reason it seemed like it was a tight fit but it was a bumpy ride uh, because of my ball joint maybe I don't know maybe they rattled themselves apart Except this car is not rattling okay don't get the right idea run a year here guys it's not rattling but you know what I'm talking about. I'm driving this every time and it took 25,000 miles for that to happen. Seriously. And that's how much I put on it. And then this happens with the light recently. And of course, that means I also drove without no fog lights for that amount of time. And it would be nice to have them actually, especially when you're cornering, it would be nice to have those lights. Um, now it does say top here. But ideally, I would like these lights to be facing out a little bit. But hopefully, uh, on the actual bumper itself, maybe slightly they're tilted. Because it would be nice to see um, where you're cornering to. 
uh, especially on dark streets. That would be very useful, and this is why I really needed these things. But right now, it's a solid fit. Um, I do have this type of connection right here. And I am assuming this is for the main uh, LED on the inside. Uh, let me show you kind of what it looks like. See? So the main one in the middle, I believe that's what it's for. And then we got a uh, halo over there. So what I'm thinking about doing, guys, is using these wires, because this would be for the halos, um, and making them turn signals instead of having these train signals. And they're just gonna be there for show. Um, I will see if there's, you know, any spare wire in there, whatever, whatever. Maybe, maybe I'll install them, but I really don't care for these to be flashing. I might try to have LED style flashing that would modernize this Chrysler 300. And this is fresh, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, that. bird doo-doo. As you can see, that wiped out good. So mainly in this video, I'm just messing with the fog lights and installing the grill. And that set and this portion of the lights, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically do them, well, time lapse basically. But it's an easy installation. I mean, look, one, two, three, four. Well, just three, <laughs> and then the light is out. So simple. Uh, however, over here, somewhere, one of these sides. There's a plastic piece that's busted. I may end up repairing that as we up go. Next is the wire and harness insulation. Well, as you can see, the fog lights are plugged in. That connector works just fine. I don't have my um, trend signals present, but that looks like the correct plug for it. Um, as I said, I plan to just turn these into trend signals. Sure. I could like tap into it and have everything connected and have all of it blinking, but I don't want to. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut these pigtails. I'm gonna cut them like that. And then I'm gonna wire that in. I could see we got a red, we got a white, we got a red and we got a black. <laughs> uh, and they even have a uh, shrink wrap here. You know, so that's kind of cool. Um, I do hope <laughs> that that red is a positive and that this red is a positive and the black being a negative. Uh, however, in a uh, house circuits, black is the hot, <laughs> which would surprise me. But of course, white would not be. So red, red, we're just going to go with that. Um, and if they work, great. So that would be kind of nice. Um, also, also, um, I will be saving the actual pigtails. What I'm going to do, I'm probably going to cut it probably like right here. And if it so happens that my blinker is going to turn too fast, maybe I want to add the original just to keep the blinker from going crazy maybe i'll install that as well i'm not being lazy here i just want modern 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 uh if i could get those in clear that would be nice but these serve nice being yellow as you can see there's none yellow over there i might just black them out to look like a bumper might just do that just basically clear coat them with black black paint mixed with clear coat you know something like and that of course this is where it would connect to uh, there's plenty of room to be able to install that later. Uh, that is a lot of wire. Um, I will have to find a way to secure it. I might just use um, HVAC tape, which is that silver metal tape. I think that would work well for this application. Uh, also, maybe some zip ties somewhere because that's a lot of loose wire. Um, maybe like a zip tie there and over there uh, in these portions like that, just to keep things tucked away nicely. Okay guys, I was gonna try to do this in a time lapse, but I figured, look, maybe somebody out there wants to actually see this. So I'm obviously getting ready to wire in these connectors here. So 
so that you can cool haul. It's got like this little plug here. Could actually plug this in somewhere. Maybe that. Oh, that's that's kind of kind of cool, kind of professional. Okay. All right. Great. This one has a two. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. I don't like it. It's uh, it's just not clean enough. But technically could have worked. So what I need to do first is not cut too much wire off. That would be a mistake. So we're doing that, just taking that off together with the connector. Same thing for this. And by the way, it's nice uh, to go, go ahead and plug in so you don't cut the wrong thing because it can happen. You might lose a train of thought and before you know it, you're doing the wrong, wrong wire. So we don't want that. I know somebody's cringing over there like, how are you gonna take a brand new wiring harness and do that? <laughs> but uh, obviously if you're watching this far you probably want to see what am i going to do um i thought i could just unravel this wire because if this looks like a normal uh electric tape but it's wrapped in such a way that i can't un unwrap it but it did tear so that's a good thing so what i want to do is i want to go ahead and Clean it up a little and i'm only gonna do this like one side where i'm gonna show you the other side i'm just gonna do a time lapse so i'm not gonna try to bore you with all the details <laughs> by the way i have allergies so it doesn't help so let's see the wire you could do like a sort of like a test wire so we're dealing with 15 gauge because it kind of falls in the middle so clean that off okay okay so that's good Now we're going to find an appropriate place for it. Let's see. Yeah, that, that can work. I wanna just open this a little bit further. I don't want nothing getting in my way. Now this red one may, may work. Um, we may have to double it up a little bit, maybe, but I think this would work so what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and install it all the way let's see clean this off somewhere like that that's why you don't want to really cut too much off oh there it is so you don't want to forget you want to go ahead and put these things on right away. You want to make sure it's a nice wrapped up type of circuit. Go ahead and put it on. Put another one on. We can close it so we don't spill it. And actually, I'll go ahead and pull out for more because that's what I need. We can just close the rest of it. And make sure this one's nicely wrapped. And uh, go ahead and just do this. And this is very, very easy. Um, self-explanatory really uh, what I will do is um, before before I actually line this whole thing up I will put a key and I'm gonna test test the circuit see if the see if it works 
um, I'll plug it in. See, they actually even have like a like a crush type of deal, but uh, I don't want that either. So I do like that wire. We'll keep it for the future, but I will cut it off and I'll cut this one off. I want to make sure I have. I mean, I got plenty, plenty of line, but I want to keep things kind of even. Guys, you know, somebody that done this many times, you know, you already know this is, this is easy, but for some, some of you, you know, this might be kind of hard to watch because, uh, you know, it looks like you're just cutting into wire and all the stuff like massive with car stuff what if it catches fire you know that kind of thing but this is really i mean look do it at your own risk okay if you do something your car burns down hey don't blame me but um you have to test everything before you play so see we would have the you know everything on there so we're just gonna basically just take this white and just gonna wrap it up and I will already be able to tell uh, if um, if my blinker is going to be blinking too fast. I'll be able to tell. So you basically twist these wires together like that. And we'll go as far as to go ahead and actually put this in the middle. Like we're going to finish it off. Because... If it's working great, we'll do just that. And then obviously I will wrap it up with some black electric tape and make it look like it's a, you know, same circuit. So now guys, time lapse and I'm gonna do that other side. Now guys, <laughs> this is kind of weird. That side, we got black and uh, black going to, uh, to white, red going to red. Over here we have two blacks. And we have a white and a red. So I put black to black, red to white, you know. So we're gonna go ahead and test this. hard to tell I mean my car is not on maybe it needs to be on okay before I touch anything I just got the flashers on that's all I got on. So flexions are not working. Now I turn the lights on. I have not turned the fog lights on yet. Oh, 
Well, we have that side. LED is on on that side. Interesting. But I do have a turn signal on over here. So let's see if I make that turn signal. Still just on. Interesting. That one's still on. So now it's just parking lights. So that is on as a parking light. But I don't understand what's going on. So I put flashers, that's not working. Actually, I'm not sure if those uh, orange uh things should flash on the side. I'm really not sure at this point. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and rewire the right circuit. So both of these are on now, which is cool. So now I could just heat shrink them. So always remember guys, when you're doing stuff like this, don't finalize it, test it. I'm gonna show you how weird this is. So check it out. Over here, black to black works just fine. Red to white works fine. Red to white does work. Black to brown works. Why did they decide to use a brown wire? Beats me. We also got a brown, brown over here. We got a yellow over here. We got a white one coming out. We got a black one coming out. But black and that brown does match actually, which is kind of cool. What's going on here? Looks like that has slid off. But anyways, I'll inspect what that. What I need is Chrysler vents, something to go in the back. Some kind of mesh to match the bumper. I did not even think about that. I mean, maybe I could do something aftermarket. I actually never had working fog lights on this car. Never had them, okay? Now, this car is smart. So it does have lights that will not come on until it's nighttime right now it's set to just be on i believe i'm well actually it's set to parking i lights. actually never had working fog lights on this car never had them okay now this car is smart so it does have lights that will not come on until it's nighttime right now it's set to just be on i believe i'm well actually it's set to parking lights experiencing the same type of issue you know basically i'm experiencing too right now so we're just gonna do that and that's just my my dash light um this technically oh my so this this technically I mean, I don't see. No. So, I mean, I have a high beam on, but this light, you know, it clicks. So, this should be my fog light. Maybe. Unless there's something else here. Because every car is different. Sometimes there's fog, like rear fog lights and, uh, other ones so this is set to automatic these are just set to on so let's see if we put out on automatic see what happens so as you could see on automatic 
even the, the bottom um, fog lights, they're not even on, okay? Maybe it's because I clicked that button once too many times. But just to be sure, let's click this back. So even when I turned the fog lights light on, that did not work. So let's see if you're experiencing the same type of issue that they're not coming on in the daytime, it's because it is daytime. At night, they'll probably come on. Um, as, uh, like here's like what I'm thinking. Obviously, obviously, right now it's set to automatic. Even the halos at the bottom don't come on. The only thing that does come on is halos. Most likely at night, this will come on. I will test this at night, okay? So let's put it just to parking lights. So just parking lights is right here, okay? Um, well, heck, let's put the whole thing on. So you could tell that's on. I mean, I don't know. This light is probably not on. Just a parking light itself. Anyways, guys, here's the deal. I have tricked um, the car into thinking that it's nighttime. Put a rug over there, over the sensor. Uh, these lights do come on now. Fog lamps still don't. Uh, I have tried many different things. Um, so one thing uh, not to confuse is this. The actual halos around, that's basically a running uh, daylight. That, that was like not a turn signal that was going on the sides over there. Uh, the turn signal is actually over there. That's where the turn signal is originally in the light. So they fell out, uh, as you can see. So I got to actually connect them. That's why there was like no turn signal uh, flashing. And it was throwing me off guard a little bit. Um, but what I'm not understanding is why that center light is not on. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and pull the bumper off. It's actually not attached. It's just basically just slid in there. And I'm gonna remove um, where the lamp is. And I wanna see if that thing is intact. Also, if you're having this issue, it is a fuse number seven for the fog lamps. I already checked it. Mine is good. So we're closing. I've tried every which way to get those things to come on. Nothing. Now. Of course, if this uh, problem still continues, I'll just go ahead and wire in together with the, with the halos. So anytime I turn the lights on, they will come on. Or I could wire them in into the actual um, running lights. So I have, I have a lot of options. So I could definitely do that. Now... For me to actually wire it in to the actual lights, that would be a little bit more complicated. Um, but to wire the, them in into the halos, uh, that's just fine. Uh, the only issue is they're always going to be on. They're probably going to heat up. Um, so best that they will be on only at night. However, it probably does not even matter. Heat up, not heat up, I don't care. Um, but I do want to observe what that lamp on the inside looks like. And I guess last thought before I actually pull the bumper off and inspect it. Um, I don't see how at night at night anything will change. I just don't see it. Um, basically by me putting a rug over there that has simulated um, that it's night. Uh, also, I could technically wire in a switch on the inside and switch it on. So I don't know if there's something wrong with my switch. I did remove it. I did look at it. Let me show you. So you press down on the top and then you could basically pull it out. So as you can see, this is just a whole unit. I don't see why there's going to be anything wrong with this unit. Okay. I just don't see it. Um, so it's just all part of that circuit. And the button appears to be clicking. I don't know if there's anything else causing it not to work, but... I would like those uh, parking lamps to work. So maybe temporarily I'll wire them in to the actual circuit. And the wires are similar in thickness. Um, 
what I could do this time is tap into the wires. Instead of uh, cutting them, is just tapping in. I don't know if I have uh, those special type of uh, clips. I should have them, but I don't know. If I have them, that would be as simple as attaching it to one of the wires and, and then boom, cl clip it in. And then it's gonna basically work. It would be a simple connection. And then once I'm done with that, I could then wire in original connector. Um, I mean, it's still gonna be like, I could unplug them if I want. I could do it that way, you know, obviously. But I could actually put things back if I want to as well. It, it will be a reversible type of That's situation. At this point, I'm wondering, is there an actual lamp on the inside? So, let's go to actually hold it proper up. Actually, the circuit is long enough surprisingly um let's see if you can see what i'm seeing so i just need a, a screwdriver let's see what's inside what if they uh chipped us and sold us sold it without a lamp Are you serious? That one is on so tight that I'm literally stripping it. I'm gonna try this side, see if this works. Okay, that worked. And that worked. Okay, because I don't need both of them off. I just need one of them. I mean, I don't see why they would do that to me. But you just never know. Yeah, there is a... Oh, shit. <laughs> what is this? It's two LEDs, it's almost like... Oh, never mind. This is the LEDs that power uh, the actual... Um, the actual halos. Okay. <laughs> Caught me off guard there for a second. Wow, just as I, oh my gosh, it springed and just dropped inside of the, of the, of the light. That, that, that's just great. Oh my gosh. It's like, are you serious? That little bolt that did not want to come out and just decided to basically just go inside.
I think I'm beginning to understand what's really happening here. I think. It might just have a bad ground. It really might be just a ground issue. But now I just gotta unplug the whole situation. By the way, this wire the way it's in there it's very loosey goosey you know what I mean like it does not snap in could be my problem and it should technically get enough electrical connection but like look how this thing is surprising if it works like it's just super loose I don't know, I'm gonna try to just maybe use pliers and see if I could get it. It's not in there. I mean, it could just be the connector. Okay, so let's try this. Just to be sure, I'm just gonna have my lights on. Okay, that's not on. Look on a fog light just in case. That's not on. Okay, guys, let me explain to you what I did exactly. So, what I have done is I saved the actual original fog light wire. I saved it just in case. But I decided to cut it. Cut it and uh, let's see. Here's, here's the main wire. Put that aside so that you're not going to get confused. This is the actual fog light light um, 
wire, right? Currently it's not working. I'm not sure if it's getting any voltage. I could test it later. I don't care right now. What I do want is halos and this to work together. And I want them to work um, with just parking lights on. So now the halo theoretically should come on together with the fog light if this is gonna be a successful wire. If not, I could also reverse this and I could put things back and plug things in because uh, I just took the actual plug and cut it. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this and test this it. This side is not done yet, but you can see exactly what I did. I just basically cut this straight down the middle. That's what I did and wired it to this. And I'm using green ones instead of red ones now because it's a thicker connection. You know, hopefully it's gonna work. So this side I'm gonna keep like that. That side I'm gonna keep like that because that will rule out the possibility of the lamp working or not working. Of course, I found that screw. I had to remove this whole assembly, got the screw out. So everything's good now. You can see it's a success. So that particular circuit does work. Now I just gotta do the same thing to that side and hopefully that's gonna work. So at this point, I did not um, solder anything in yet. So I have time uh, before I do that. Done the wiring. Now it's the moment of truth. Let's see what's gonna happen. I just put all of the lights on without like turning on the um, ignition. Yeah, everything. Halo, and that works. So that's that's kind of cool. I'm not sure what's going on with my actual switch uh, for the fog lights because the fuse is not blowing, but it's not coming on. It could be something else somewhere broken. Uh, I don't care that it's uh, not working with, with the actual fog light uh, switch. Now I know when I actually turn on the car, the whole thing's gonna come on and I really like that. So now it's time for me to get this wire nice and secure on the bumper. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and install the Bentley grill. I know you're all gonna think this might be gimmicky, but some of you are gonna think it's pretty cool. Plus, I got nothing to prove. This is a 19 year old car. I'm doing this personally for aesthetics and if it's gonna be aesthetically pleasing for me, then hey, why not, you know? So I wanna snap it in first. Last time it was snapped in, but I lost it. And then I gotta screw it in. So I'm gonna remove my mechanics light. Shut the hood. Yeah, I want to make sure. And now let's turn the lights on. What do you think guys that looks nice doesn't it it looks very clean you can see i even changed my my uh, tone of voice it does look nice it looks it looks cool for a 19 year old car come on and of course guys it's time it's time for me to go ahead and uh melt this I'm trying to do it with one hand. Well, 
let's up the temperature some. There it goes. It has melted. And that's what I was not seeing before. Let's see if I could actually get a nice zoom on it. Now this stuff is so tiny. Does not want to zoom in. Maybe that will do it. You have to wait till this thing melts. Okay, it has melted. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side now. So you could see that this side is done. This side is done. Now, what I'm not gonna do on camera is wrapping this in electrical tape. That's all self-explanatory, but I will make it look nice and, you know, secure that wire. And that, that's all up to you how you wanna do that. But this is a very good method for connecting wires together, guys. And as you can see, things worked. Please, when you do this, you know, test them. Uh, you could go ahead and prepare everything, but, you know, test it before you actually uh, install them. By the way, if anybody's wondering, that's, that's, um, that piece of wire, that piece of plastic, that was to protect that metal circuit. That's something that they had. It has nothing to do with me. Mine is only up, up to this point, but I put some of it onto it. You know, I was actually able to force it on. I mean, look at it. That doesn't it look cool, guys. That looks like a Batmobile, man. I mean, I know it doesn't look like no Bentley. There's no Bentley that looks like this, but it looks good, man. It looks like something Bentley would have made. Um, of course, I got to do some uh, paint correction and stuff like that. Uh, the bumper is painted. Um, and what has happened, it actually, the paint shirt flat. Uh, because uh, basically it was, uh, it turned dark. It was like really cold that day. And I think like morning, well, morning dew or whatever has happened and it turned flat. But I do like this flat look though. I do like it. Um, I think if I could get the whole car looking flat, that would be nice. But I also like for it to be shiny and the grill is actually flat black. I actually got the gr grill flat black, so it kind of matches. But I was thinking about repainting this whole car. I don't know if it's worth it, but hey, I already got... A gallon I've paid for it uh well two quarts of it technically but they put it inside of a gallon and it's a base coat clear coat so it would make a gallon of paint uh maybe even a little more depending on how I mix it but uh yeah I also got a nice Bentley original original can you believe original Bentley sign for the back and those things are like 300 bucks so I found one that had a damaged clip on it and they sold it like I don't know like really cheap well compared to the ones that we're selling and i'm gonna see if that's gonna work in the back i know nobody's gonna think this is a bentley you know but it looks nice i mean don't you agree guys like what do you think write in the comments below hey would you do this what do you think um and of course uh 
I have not installed those lamps yet. I will be pulling all this off and I will be installing those lamps. That's my turn signals. And as you can tell, they're not in the same location as original Chrysler um, turn signals because those were at the bottom. So this new light design does really set it off, I think. But um, yeah. But anyways, guys, it's the end of the video. This job is complete. So thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.